the Lord will be coming from James chapter 1, a very familiar passage of scripture. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, I'm going to pick up reading at verse number 2 and I'm going to read through verse number 5. The Bible reads, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. This morning, I want to preach from the title, The Significance of Suffering. The Significance of Suffering. On last week, I preached a sermon, Don't Let It Get to You, talking about how all of us were going to have to endure seasons of suffering. And in those seasons of suffering, we can't get so caught up in the season that we Forget that there's going to be another season that comes after it. We can't get so caught up in what we're going through at the moment that we forget that trouble don't last always. We can't get so caught up in the pain and the hardship that we feel that we feel like everything is over. We got to know that God has orchestrated seasons of suffering to get us to an expected end. This morning, I want to piggyback off of that word from last week, and I want to talk about the significance of suffering because there is something significant tied to our suffering. We gather here to explore a profound and often challenging aspect of our faith's journey, and that is how God uses suffering to shape our lives. Suffering is a universal experience that none of us can escape. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how many good deeds you do. I don't care how much you give to charity. Uh, you, you, You cannot escape suffering. None of us can escape its touch, and yet it often leaves us questioning once we're touched and uh, struggling with the questions of why did we have to go through what it was that we had to go through? Why does a loving God allow us to endure pain? Why does a loving God not allow us to endure loss and hardship? Is there a deeper meaning behind our trials? Um, God does not waste our pain does not waste our suffering. He does not waste our moments of sadness and tears. Instead, he uses it to mold us. He uses it to make us. He uses it to refine us and to draw us closer to him. Uh, Just as a potter skillfully shapes clay into being what he wants it to be, our creator, our God, uses pressure and pain of life to form us into the vessels of his grace and of his glory. It is through our trials that we learn perseverance. It's through our trials that we learn patience. God uses suffering like a sculptor uses a chisel. God uses the ministry of suffering. Although suffering most times seems like moments of misery, suffering is actually a ministry because suffering accomplishes uh, God's will and his purpose in each and every one of our lives. I know it doesn't feel like it when you go through it, but once you come out on the other side of it, you can declare like I can declare this morning that God used what we went through to make us who we are today. God uses our suffering to shape our rough edges. He uses suffering to push us closer to our purpose. He uses suffering to weed out the things that should not be in our life. I mentioned suffering because suffering is the backdrop of our scripture this morning. Suffering is the canvas in which James is writing this letter on. This uh, James is writing this letter to these individuals. Uh, this brother of Jesus is writing uh, to individuals who are experiencing the ministry of suffering. In verse 1, James acknowledges the fact that they have been scattered abroad. James is writing to the same people that Peter was writing to. This morning, uh, he is writing to them. He's trying to encourage them. James writes this letter to encourage them that though they are suffering, their suffering has 
some significance. Would you just look at the person next to you real quick and encourage them and just let them know your suffering has some significance. In fact, James suggests that our suffering has so much significance that he says something. In verse number two, James says that our suffering has so much significance that whatever we do, we ought to count it all joy. Uh, he said it's so important. So much significance is tied to what we're going through. So much significance is tied to the pain that we feel and the tears that we cry. That when we cry them, we ought to count it all joy. Elder Bush in the Message Bible, it reads a little different. It says, consider it a gift when you're going through adversity. James is saying that our pain is so purposeful. He is saying that our ridicule is so redemptive. James is saying whenever we are suffering, it's a gift. James said our suffering is something that we, could, we should consider joyful. He said, count it all joy. Somebody say joy. See, joy gives birth to rejoicing. The root of rejoicing is having joy. James is suggesting that whenever we're going through diversity, whenever we're going through adversity, whenever we're going through trials and tribulations, he suggests that that's really the best time to give God praise. When, whenever it seems like stuff is just going on in your life, when it seems like you just can't catch a break, that's really the time for you to open your mouth, throw your hands up, and give God praise. James says it's in those moments that we ought to count it all joy. See, we like to shout when things are going well, when our health is well, when our money is well, when our children is well, when our marriage is well. See, we like to give God praise when our skies are blue, when, when we are not dating disaster and courting chaos. We like to give God praise in those moments. There's nothing wrong with that. But James is suggesting that those moments are really not the time to give God praise. In fact, he's just suggesting that we ought to give God praise and have joy when we fall or in encounter difficult circumstance <laughs> when you don't know where the money coming from that's when you ought to say God I thank you when you don't know what the doctor gonna do that's when you ought to say God I give you glory when you don't know what that joker gonna do you ought to say God I give you praise in the midst of what I'm going through in the midst of what's going on in my life this is the moment that I'm gonna give you praise because there's something significant that's tied to our suffering and I don't know who I came to talk to this morning but it seems like God is using the ministry of suffering to shape you it seems like every time you turn around it's something it seems like whenever you take two steps forward it looks like you feel like you're taking ten steps back I don't know who I'm talking to but somebody say I'm in a season of suffering I feel like something is happening in my life and I don't know why this is happening to me but I I come to tell you this morning have joy because there is something significant attached to what you are going through there's something significant attached to the pain that you feel there's something significant attached to the tears that you're crying don't give up while you're going through your season of suffering hold on just a little while longer because God getting ready to make sense out of your suffering something significant attached to your suffering. The question then becomes uh, if we're supposed to have joy when we're suffering, what's so significant about my suffering? James suggests a couple of different things in the text. Number one, he says suffering is so significant because suffering produces patience in us. <laughs> James says in verse number two, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations, knowing that the testing and the trying of your faith is producing patience. James says trials will produce patience. And some of y'all could agree that James with James this morning, because if the truth be told, marriage produced some patience in you. Yeah. Raising children produce some patience patience in you owning a home produce some pa paying bills produce some patience in you saying yes to ministry produce some patience in you James says that the trials of life will produce patience in you and I don't care how you how much you try to avoid it you can't get out of suffering watch what James says he said count it all joy not if you fall not if you fall but when you 
fall. That lets me know I don't care how dressed up you are this morning. I don't care how good you smell this morning. I don't care what you covered up and what you tried to hide. All of us have done, have fallen to some temptation. All of us have fallen and if you haven't fallen keep waking up saying good morning and keep laying down saying good night keep waking up watching the sun rise and laying down watching it set you're gonna end up with some falls james suggests that if you are going to experience some trials not just trials but diverse trials many one thing after another i don't know about you have you ever been in a season in your life where it seemed like things were just happening one after another it seemed like a domino effect when i fixed this something else broke when i got that together something else fell apart when i got this on track something else got off track one thing after another james says you're going to have some diverse temptations but in these times when these times occur you got to count it all joy because your suffering is producing patience. Could you touch your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, something is being produced in you. <laughs> something is being produced in you. I know it don't feel good. I know you don't like it. I know it made you cry. I know you want to just give up, but something is being produced. Would you look at the, to the other side and encourage that person sitting next to you? I know you want to give up, but something is being produced in you. This word patience that James uses in verse 2 really means to remain under. It means to remain under. It connotes the thought of enduring a trial, enduring under something heavy. James says that suffering has given you the ability to take a licking and keep on ticking. Uh, suffering has caused you uh, to build up some muscle that you can endure. You can take some stuff. You can handle some pressure. You can handle some weight because you suffer because oh my god help me in here oh that word means to remain under and it's a blessing because even though you're under the weight even though you're under the stress even though you're under the pressure the good news is you're still under it you didn't die under it you didn't give up under it you didn't lose your mind under it you were able to be under it and still survive you were able to still be under it and still say thank you you were under it and still able to close yourself in your right mind James says because God wants us to have endures, he allows us to go through trials and tribulations. Uh, because it's the trials and the tribulations that we face in life that produce enough power and enough patience for us to hang on in there. Somebody shout endurance. Having the ability to endure is a wonderful asset. Having the ability to endure is a wonderful blessing. Now people may never pat you on your back because you endure. People may never give you credit because you endure but one of the reasons we celebrated these beautiful couples just a few minutes ago because they had the power to endure. Somebody say 40 years. I don't care if it was 40 years or 4 months. You had the power to endure some stuff. Endurance. Endurance is important. Endurance is important because God rewards the ones that can endure. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You don't get a crown for quit. You don't get a crown for just walking away. You don't give him a crown for just giving up. You don't give a crown for just doing what you want to do. But you get a crown when you learn how to endure. You get a crown when you let the spirit fight your battle. You get a crown when you let God hold you up. You get a crown. When, oh my God in here. But God gives you a crown when you learn how to endure. Count it all joy. When you fall in the diver's temptation. Why? Because suffering is producing something. It's producing patience. Suffering produces the kind of believers that have learned how to endure some stuff. Suffering is significant not only because it produces patience, but suffering is significant because it pushes us to perfection. Somebody say pushes us to perfection. Suffering is not only produ producing patience, but it's pushing you to 
perfection. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I came to tell somebody that God is perfecting something in you. God is pushing you toward perfection. Something perfect is going to come out of your suffering. Something perfect is coming out of your pain. Something perfect coming out of your disappointment. Something perfect is coming out of what you're going through. I know it sounds funny. I know it sounds funny. How can something perfect come out of my pain? How can something perfect come out of what I'm going through? How can something perfect come out of something so ugly? A pearl, a pearl is a very expensive gem. They are produced from oysters. Pearls are born out of irritation. Sand or parasites get inside of an oyster and it causes extreme discomfort. Uh, extreme discomfort comfort, extreme irritation and what happens is because of the irritation, the oyster produces a chemical called aroganite. Uh, and this aroganite and, it, and other materials it, it, it covers the sand or that parasite that has gotten inside of the oyster and other things begin to happen and before you know it you have a beautiful pearl that has come from a pesky piece of sand y'all get ready to hear me in here I don't know who I'm talking to but God has allowed a parasite in the form of a person to get into your life and, and he's caused you oh my God to cover it in prayer cover it in faith fast and cover it in consecration and something beautiful is getting ready to <laughs> Something beautiful is getting ready to be produced out of what got on your nerves. Something beautiful is getting ready to be produced out of what irritated you. Something beautiful is getting ready to be produced out of what you had to go through. You got to understand. God don't allow just good things to happen to us all the time. Because if you don't feed your baby nothing but candy, the baby may be happy, but it's going to be malnourished. Uh, it may be happy, but you're not going to be healthy. You may smile and you may laugh, but in a little while, you ain't going to have no teeth. My God in here. That irritation calls something to come out of you. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but is there anybody who had an uh, irritation, uh, Lord God, that caused you to pray a little differently than you were praying? Anybody had an irritation, caused you to fast a little longer than you were used to fasting? Somebody had an irritation that caused you to seek God in a way you have never seek God before? James says in verse number four, let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect. That word perfect means mature. It means to be finished. It means to be complete. That word perfect doesn't mean that you got it all together. It doesn't mean that you're sinless. It doesn't mean that you have every I dotted or every T crossed. It means that you've grown up means that you come to a place of maturity. Uh, you can't be uh, pushed to the kind of perfection to where you're sinless, where you never make a mistake, you never miss the mark. You can't be pushed to that kind of perfection, but you can be pushed to a place of maturity. Somebody in the house ought to give God praise because he's growing you up. Uh, with the situations that have happened in your life, the things that you had to go through, the things you had to endure, it has caused you to grow up. It's caused you to no longer be a babe in Christ. You had to go in your word. You had to study some things out. You had to grow up. You had to come to another level of spiritual maturity just to get through what you were going through. Paul was talking to the church in Corinth, and when he was writing the letter to Corinth, he was writing from the standpoint of maturity. Paul knew he wasn't always an adult in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, thought as a child, understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. He said, I used to be a child, but I've been through some suffering. I've been through some stuff that has grown me up. And this, oh my God, is there anybody in the room who's ever been through some stuff that has caused you to grow up? 
Somebody say, Pastor, how do you know when you're mature? How do you know when you've grown up? You know when the stuff that used to make you cry, you can laugh at. When the stuff that used to get on your nerve, you can look past. When the people who used to make you angry, oh my God, you could just keep on walking like it was, oh my God, help me in here. Because suffering has pushed me to perfection. It's pushed me to grow up. James says, count it all joy. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. There is significance in your suffering. Number one, because it's producing patience in us. Secondly, suffering is pushing perfection to us. But there is significance in suffering. Because suffering is pulling prayer out of us. Is pulling prayer out of us. I'm in verse number five. James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. The message Bible said it like this. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father because he loves to help. Y'all going to help me. I like the message Bible. The message Bible, get right to the point. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father because he loves to help. James is talking about suffering. He talks about how suffering is producing patience. He talks about how suffering pushes us to perfection. Then he tells us, tells us how uh, suffering pulls prayer out of us. He says if you don't know how to handle your suffering, he says that what you ought to do is what you should do in the beginning is you should pray. He says you have to pray because nothing pulls prayer out of us like suffering. I know I may lose a couple of amens from people who want to act like and play like you're perfect and like you've never been through anything. But then there are some of us, I know it's about 50 of all, 50 or well, 51, 52, 53, 54, who can say, I've been through some stuff that caused me to pray a little bit different. Some I couldn't handle it. It was on my nerve. I thought I was going to have to kill that joker. I had to get on my knees and pray. Somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. Oh, my God. Oh, I say anybody who's ever endured a season of suffering because suffering will pull a prayer out of you. You don't care uh, if your makeup run when you pray. You don't care. Oh, my God. If your hair get messed up when you pray. You don't care uh, who looking at you. You don't care if other brothers see you cry. You don't care if other brothers see you come to the altar because sometimes suffering will cause you to pray in a way that you never knew you could pray. James says if any man lacks wisdom let him ask God uh, he says let him pray I don't know about you but you have you ever been in a season where you just didn't know what to do you you just been in a season you didn't know which way to turn you exhausted all of the things that you could exhaust you called everybody you could call you you did everything that you could do huh? and then you fit something about it see, something you finally came to yourself and did what you should have did in the beginning and that was to get on your knees and ask God <laughs> How to help me please is there anybody in here who could say hey, it was a time when I got on my knees and when I got on my knees I didn't have time for no pretty prayer I couldn't say now lay me down to sleep pray the Lord my soul to keep if I die before I weep when I got on my knees all I could say was Lord help me I kind of need your help I, I need your strength I need your power I need your love I need some understanding I need some wisdom Suffering. Suffering. Suffering will cause you to pray a little different. Suffering will cause you to talk to God a little different. David talks about a time of suffering in his life. In Psalms 18, verse number four, David says, the cause of death entangled me. The torments of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave called around me. The snares of death confronted me. David said, there was a time in my life where it felt like I was just going to die. I just felt like I wasn't going to make it. Felt like death was all around me. There was a time where I felt like I could not get any further. I couldn't take any more. Or is there anybody in the room this morning who's ever been in that kind of position? You've ever been in that kind of place? You've been in the season of your life where you were tired of suffering. You were tired of going through what you were going through. But David said, I was suffering, but 
in my suffering. <laughs> suffering pulled prayer out of me because verse 6 says, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. David says in my distress, I didn't run to my mama. I didn't run to my daddy. I didn't run to my sister. I didn't run to my brother. But I turned to the one and only God. I said, Lord, help me me. God, help me to be who you're calling me to be. Even though I'm going through what I'm going through. Father, I need you to help me. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to do what my grandmama says and to walk with me while I'm on this uh, tedious journey. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who's ever felt like uh, could nobody help you uh, but God himself? Uh, God, you got to come down uh, out of the clouds uh, and you got to come uh, and see about me uh, because what I'm going through, uh, I can't make sense out of it. Uh, what I'm going through, uh, I can't understand. Uh, but Father, I need uh, you to help me. Uh, is there anybody here who can say when I get down on my knees and ask the Lord to help me something in me begin to stand up something in me begin to stand up something in me begin to get stronger God begin to hold me he begin to hold me up because suffering brought another level of prayer out of my life uh, suffering uh, brought another level uh, of intensity uh, out of my life uh, I did not like uh, what I went through uh, but now that I'm on the other side uh, of my suffering uh, I can say thank you Jesus uh, for what I went through uh, thank you Jesus uh, for how they left me uh, thank you Jesus uh, for how they talked about me thank you Jesus uh, for what happened uh, in my body uh, because of what I went through I'm at another level I'm in another place my suffering was significant it taught me patience it pushed me to perfection and then it called me to say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven is there anybody in the room who can say pain taught me how to pray I can say Father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw that self from me where the shell where the shell where the shell I go good morning cow may the Lord God bless you real good I just stop and tell somebody don't be weary in your suffering don't give up in your suffering because suffering there is something significant about what you're going through go through what you're going through until God brings you out There is significance in your suffering. There have been some of you who have had to go through some things and you just don't understand why. Had to go make funeral arrangements somebody you never thought you'd have to bury but I come to tell you that God is going to make sense out of your suffering some people thought would never leave you 
It looked like they turned their back and walked away from you with ease. Caused you to be in a season of suffering. But God told me to tell you this morning that your suffering is significant. Your suffering is significant. I'm trying to produce some patience in you. I'm trying to push you to perfection. I'm trying to get you to a place to where you can grow up spiritually and be everything that I called you to be before the foundation of this world. That's why I'm allowing some things to make you cry. That's why I'm allowing some things to hurt your feelings. That's why I'm allowing some people to walk out of your life because I need you to grow up and be who I'm calling you to be because there's a remnant of people waiting on your voice. But I'm allowing this pressure Allowing this weight to be bestowed upon you so that you'll realize that your mama can't help you with this. Your money can't help you with this. Your affiliation can't help you with this. I'm going to be the only one that can help you with this. And until you realize that and get on your knees and say, I yield, I yield, I yield, you continue. To feel this pressure. Come on, we're standing all over this building. <laughs>